I ended the last episode on a bit of a cliffhanger. I showed you a big stinking exhaust and then uh, didn't do anything with it. Will it fit on the moped? Spoiler alert! Did it take tons of modifications? Yes it did. Let's go back a few days and watch them all happen. Instructions. They're in French, but uh, hey, at least it's instructions. There is no way this pedal is going to clear, is it? All right, I've had some time to look at this thing and start planning it out. First thing is look at that restriction that comes right out of this this is the ball joint that goes into the uh, exhaust port of the cylinder look at that freaking restriction 8.5 millimeters I mean this new 74 cc kit has a huge exhaust port which seems a little bit stupid if I'm immediately going down to a under 10 millimeter hole um, the second thing is I can't see any way to mount this thing without fouling on this pedal. This pedal's gonna hit, I mean, that's, you know, four and a half, five inches. It, it's not even close. Like, I'd have to weld, you know, a, a solid, you know, maybe two inches onto this pedal to make it work. So anyway, that's why I'm not recording and, uh, and showing you all this stuff that I'm trying to figure out. But uh, when I get it figured out, I'll, I'll start recording again and, and show you how it's done. All right, I got it mocked up. Uh, I, got the, I got it hooked up pretty good right there. And, uh, and they've got this little arm that attaches to the swing arm. Um, it variates well. Uh, I can I can push it and it variates pretty good. I don't think there's any fouling when it variates. But look at this damn pedal. Like, I mean, in order to clear that, I got to pull the pedal out to about here. And look at this. That's got to come way back, which it then kind of doesn't mount up correctly. So. Yeah, I think I gotta modify this pedal, which sucks. I'm gonna try to knock this whole thing out. If I can't knock it out, I'll come in here and cut it out, but I, I don't see any reason to leave that in there. It seems ridiculous that I would go from a huge exhaust port into that. So, it's coming out. Look at that. I think it popped right out. Hell yeah, much better, much better. All right, so I'm certainly going to have to extend this uh, pedal crank a little bit, about two inches. I've got a, a Tomos pedal crank that's pretty much the same size. I tried this pedal on my other Tomos and it worked fine. So I'm gonna cut off about two inches off of that crank and, and weld it onto here so I can uh, so I can mount this pedal so it'll clear this exhaust. Um, that's at home so I can't do that right now. But now that I know my plan, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and install this exhaust for real. Um, I had it loosely up there and, I, and, and it, it cleared the center stand when the center stand kicked up but We'll, we'll check again as soon as I get it on all the way. Um, 
So, uh, with that, it's time to go. This is steel, and the cylinder is aluminum. So I'm going to use a little anises on this, just so they don't have any galvanic reaction. And, and this, will, this could seize in there forever if I don't do this. There's my copper washer. And then this is what the springs hook up into. I'm getting that anises freaking everywhere. You gotta crush that copper washer. So give it a good a good turn there. This bracket is for a, a square swing arm, but mine's round. So I'm gonna put a little of this uh, this rubber weather stripping in there just to kind of give it a little bit better uh, better holding power. I'm not using Loctite because they provided these nice nylock nuts. So there should be plenty to keep it on there, I'm hoping. Now let's set this position. where it needs to be. Right there. Two inches on the nose. Alright. Good morning. Here's a crank my brother had laying around that's bent. It's a Tomos crank. This is my Motobacon pedal and as you can see it fits right on this Tomos crank so that's a good thing. My plan is to cut this off and weld it onto my existing crank so that um, so that I have that extra two inches of clearance. I can pretty much cut two inches off of the, after the bend and I've got this side too to cut two inches off so I've got two chances at it. Plus there's this little collar on there so I might use that collar to increase the strength a little bit. I really have to get in there and play around but um, the very first thing I'm going to do which is going to be a pain in the ass but it's the right way to do this is um, unfortunately to pull this crank out. Uh, it's best just to have it off of the bike so I can play around and weld on it and not be on the bike. So yeah, that's a pain in the ass, but um, I think it needs to be done. So here goes. You've got the horsepower. perfect to just uh, to firm up that joint. I think it's steel. It's magnetic so I can weld it. I want to be real careful about putting heat into this thing. I don't want it to get, I don't want it to get warped or bent or anything. Damn, that shit is hard! That is some hard metal! Alright, so this is going to go on the end right here. And then, maybe, I'm not sure, but I might put this, this collar over top of the whole thing like so um, just for just for strength so my next step is I gotta grind 
I want this chamfered so I can lay my lay my bead, my weld inside of a of a little chamfer there. And I want it perfectly flat as well, so it's so it's absolutely a hundred percent square. So uh, I'm going over to the grinder. All right, I got it all welded up. I'm gonna go grind this down and uh, I might just leave it, I'm not sure. All right, those welds cleaned up nicely. Um, I could probably just leave this. It's, I mean, it ain't going nowhere. I don't know. I mean, the thing about putting this collar on is that I wouldn't make it look clean. And right now it looks pretty damn clean. I think I'm just gonna leave it just like this. Welds like to rust, so I'm going to go ahead and hit this with some paint just to protect it uh, and then it's time to install. since we rebuilt, so this is the first turnover of the whole damn modified build. Fingers across, we're gonna test the variator, my piston, my deep comp cable. Here we go. Oh shit! Okay. That broke. All right, I'm gonna weld this thing again. I'm uh, I'm turning up the heat on this uh, welder to get it penetrated a bit more, and then I'll put that collar on as well and weld that. That thing won't go anywhere after that. That was a pain in the ass. So I'm going to take this collar and weld it on right there. That thing is freaking solid. I'm going to grind these back a little bit. I ain't too worried about how it looks. But I'm going to grind it back just a little bit so they're not bumpy. There it is. Looking pretty good. That's got to be strong. I mean, there's no way that thing's breaking. I'm going to reinstall. started trying to turn over the engine and the problem was is that I couldn't get this clutch to grab in any kind of meaningful way. Um, I've pulled it off and I see that they're flinging out, that the centrifugal clutch is flinging out. Uh, it's this 
engine has so much compression now, even when I'm on decomp, it's still hard to turn over. It's, connect, it's connecting now somewhat, and I think I'll be able to start it. Um, I did look online, and online a lot of people said that, hey, these brand new clutches, sometimes you need to run it a few times until it really starts biting. So I think after we get it started up, uh, the clutch is going to sort itself out. I really just need, to, need it to grab enough so that I can start the engine. However, if I can't get it to grab enough to start the engine, I have a backup plan. Which is this drill, which will pretty much, um, it's like putting a pull start on. I'll start it up with this drill, but I'm hoping I won't have to use this. But uh, all of this has come down to right now. Time to start this stinking thing and, uh, and get it out on the street. I am going to follow a break-in procedure after we get it started. Um, probably not as hardcore as some of the things I've read online. Uh, it goes against my nature. I'm more of a grip it and rip it kind of person, so usually I would just let it roll. But um, but I've worked so hard on it, I don't want to mess it up now. I'll keep an eye on temperatures, and uh, and I don't think I really have to go through the hardcore break-in procedure, mostly because the piston rings on these things are fat as hell, and uh, they're not going to be delicate. So. Um, I'll probably get it up to speed a few times, um, vary a lot of the RPMs, just keep an eye on the temperature, um, and as soon as I'm sure it's working the way I want it to work, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let it go. I have a 79 jet in the carb right now, which is probably going to be a little rich. I think I'm going to be around a 74 or 76 by the end of it, uh, but it's always good to start off rich. So 79 jet in there right now. And um, the only thing left to do is to put some dang gas in here and turn it over and hope it catches. All right, here it goes. Got the door open. Let me turn on the fan. And then I'm going to make this thing start. So I, I couldn't get it started last night. I'm back this morning. The problem is, is that there's so much compression in there, I can't get it fast enough for the clutch to engage. Uh, I can do it no problem with the spark plug out, uh, but as soon as I put the spark plug in, it's like that decomp isn't, um, isn't strong enough. So actually this morning, I didn't even film it, but this morning I took the head off, which was a pain in the ass. And uh, I just made sure that the decomp looked like it was working fine, and it does. Um, I redid the cable, because I thought this cable might have been a bit too short, so I was kind of holding the decomp open all the time. So I redid the cable and, uh, and, and put it back on and then tightened it, and I confirmed, I can tell just by spinning it, I can tell that the decomp's working. Um, I just don't know if it's decompressing enough to give me that that spin I need so um, anyway this is my first try after uh, after messing with the decomp I'm gonna get on it I'm gonna spin like mad and um, and I'm gonna try to get this clutch to engage and start the stinking thing up it's been so damn long I just want it running so anyway wish me luck here it goes. Oh, I must be feeling confident because I got the fan going and everything. Come on, baby! Oh. I, can, I can feel it spinning a 
bit. So that's better. Oh. All right. It's certainly engaging. So maybe, maybe I got a shot at this thing. Come on, baby. Status update. I can get the clutch to engage. I can get the engine to turn over. But as soon as I let go of the decomp, boom, it stops. I can't, I can't pedal any harder. I'm out of breath. I didn't show it on the video, but I've been pedaling the shit out of this stupid thing. I'm done jacking around. I'm gonna get this thing started. I'm gonna get it started now. And maybe I just need to get it running a little bit before I do. Get this kind of, get some of the meat on that going and get some lube in there. So I'm going to start it with the old drill. I just want to see some smoke. plug, check for spark, see if the plug's wet, all the good stuff. Yeah, no spark at all now. I don't know if one of my connections came loose or I tried unplugging the kill switch to make sure that wasn't it and that's not it. I'm at a loss. Alright, so last night I had a big fat spark. And this morning I don't. I'm not 100% sure the, the reason why, but the eagle eyes among you will recognize that this is a different spark plug wire than I had on before. Um, the reason being, although I didn't cover it in that episode, is that the spark plug wire that Treat sent me with the CDI was bad. I sat there and troubleshooted for three days and couldn't figure out why I wasn't getting a spark when I knew it was hooked up correctly. I flipped out the spark plug wire and boom, had a spark. Then I had to mess with the grounds to get a good fat one, but um, I think my first order of business is to flip out this spark plug wire. See if that's my problem. I'd really hate to pull all this apart and check for a connection that got loose, but uh, it looks like I'm probably going to have to do that. I'll do this first, we'll see what happens, and then, uh, and then it's back to troubleshooting stick and spark again. Uh, I'm not even going to film it. I'll come back and tell you what I found. Alright, I've been doing my, uh, my detective work here my trusted multimeter. I think I found the issue. I'm not sure how to fix it yet, but I think I might have a, a broken wire, which isn't bad. Let me show you how I did it. You have two coils in this stator, both putting out power. This, um, this yellow one, if you'll remember from that previous episode, the yellow one is my lighting coil. So let's see. Put it on AC, we're giving AC power here. So if I put it on AC, I got this one into a ground. And watch what happens when I spin it up. Can you see that? Yeah, watch what happens when I spin it up. Alright. Getting some good power out of that. This black and red one is for the ignition coil, which provides the spark. And watch what happens when I spin that one up. Not a, not a damn thing. 
All right. Um, so you can see I've got the stator box open. And uh, this is my ignition coil right here. I've just unscrewed it from the stator plate. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a quick continuity check on, this, um, on these wires just to make sure that there's not a break in the wire. Although I'll be honest with you, I bet there's not. And the reason why is I think I burned this coil out. How did I do that? Well, I used this spark plug wire from, uh, Treat sent me a bad one with the CDI. Uh, so I used this one, which was left over from my MG restoration. And um, if you don't use uh, a spark plug wire that's matched uh, to, you know, you need to match resistance to the size of your coils. And if you don't, you can burn out a coil. And since this is probably made for a much bigger coil, um, I think maybe that was my problem. I'll know here in a sec. The good news is, is that Treat sells these internal coils uh, for 17 bucks. I don't have to buy the whole stupid part the party uh, CDI again. Um, but my gut tells me that I burned this thing out using the wrong spark plug wire. Um, because I was sitting here sparking that thing over and over and over again uh, and just admiring the big fat spark. Uh, I probably shouldn't have been doing that. Anyway, um, let me test it out for continuity and then we'll find out. Yeah. The wires are intact. This ignition coil is bad. I burned it out. Son of a bitch. All right. I'm gonna make some orders and parts. I'll see you again in two days. Well, actually, probably more like four days. Shit. <laughs>